In case you didn't know, besides creating some really awesome animations worthy of having Canadians like me create silly little videos about them, Japan is known for some really weird shit. And as usual, anime can be no exception. I can think of anime even just out of the small amount that I have reviewed that can easily fall into the WTF Japan category. And I know that there are many more out there that I haven't even reviewed yet. But there is one that is like at the top. It may not be the weirdest anime that has ever been created, but it has sort of created like a standard now. If you come to me and are like all, Hey Ark, I found this really screwed up anime. Is it as screwed up as FLCL? As... Well, no. Then it's not really screwed up now, is it? Today's anime has a plot that makes absolutely no sense, but at the same time, it's absolutely brilliant. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arkada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, Fooly Cooly, or as it is also known, FLCL. Let's jam. Oh boy, where do I even begin? The problem with trying to explain the plot of FLCL is that it is very hard to do so. Mainly because some people would argue that it doesn't even have one. But I will do my best to explain what happens in the initial scenes, as sort of a primer as it were, and then we can go from there. Naota is a common but emotionally detached 6th grader who, after complaining about having an uninteresting and boring life, almost gets into a semi-romantic relationship with a high schooler slash his brother's ex-girlfriend before finding himself getting violently run over by a pink-haired alien riding a sick yellow Vespa and wielding a chainsaw electric guitar which somehow gives him interdimensional powers to summon mechanical beings of immense size from his head. Oh yeah, and there's also mega corporations and their top secret agents, arsons, supposed gods of death, overly perverted family members, and pirate kings. You could not make this shit up if you tried. Does FLCL have a plot? Technically, yes. And if you were to watch the show multiple times, then it is possible that you may have a glimpse at what was going on in the minds of the creators during what I would have to assume to be a drug-induced writing session. Because Alice in Wonderland has nothing on this stuff. The best sort of comparison that I can compile here is like if the creators took the mind fuckery of Neon Genesis Evangelion and crossed it with the visual insanity that is Gurren Lagann. Which is hilarious when you realize that's basically what they did because Gainax's fingerprints are all over this shit. True, the animation production was handled by production IG of all places, but that almost seems to only add to the screwed up nature of this show. I can't even think of another show that has the same amount of insanity that is contained in this short six episode series. Like Excel Saga and Cromartie High School are screwed up in their own ways, but they really don't come close to this. Honestly, if you can get your mind wrapped around the fact that the plot is just completely off the chain, then the characters are really not that hard to figure out or at least classify. You have Naoto, who is your typical angsty sixth grader with conflicting emotions as to love and relationships as he journeys through the great wilderness of puberty. Then there are his classmates, who seem to be on the same level as him and give me flashbacks to Toji and Kensuke from Evangelion, as well as a female classmate, Nitamori, who totally may or may not have a crush on Naoto, thus making a romance square or something. Also, there is the aforementioned brother's ex-girlfriend Mamimi, who may seem to be the most normal cast member at times, at least among the main cast, although she does have her own inner demons that like to manifest themselves from time to time. And you may notice how I've been avoiding the pink-haired freak in the room, as Haru Haru Haruko is the source of the majority of insanity that the show contains, and she is as sane as her name is pronounceable. Seriously, I don't even think the voice actors had a fun time trying to say Haru Haru Haruko multiple times quickly. Haruko is a character who you can never really get a beat on, as she seems to change her personality at the drop of a hat. From lover to teacher to a bloody superhero, she is what makes FLCL the mindfuck that it is, and as such, is more or less one of the greatest, if unexplainable, characters ever. The greatest, or at least the most interesting thing in regards to how the show looks, isn't that the animation is bad, but rather just the sheer amount of visual styles that the show happens to contain. There is no standard animation style for this show. It goes from cheap and basic to Matrix 3D to having entire scenes drawn like it's a manga. And you know what? There's even a scene animated like it's from South Park for no goddamn reason. Those slow motion scenes are really tough, huh? 
Yeah, you have to hold your breath until they cut. You can get cramps from that, you know? The thing is, normally I would say that the lack of any sort of normality with the show's animation would be a hit against the show. See, welcome to the NHK and Samurai 7. But in this particular case, it's a big boon. Not just because it totally fits with the messed up nature of the show, but also just because they have all these various different styles and they do them all very well. And that is a mark of quality, people. A definite mark of quality. The soundtrack of FLCL is filled with the hard rock music from a band known as The Pillows. What I like about it, besides the musical style itself, is the fact that it never tries to overpower the rest of the show. Not that it could, even if it wanted to, but still. It's fast-paced enough to sync with all the different scenes and animation styles, which is a great feat. The dub, on the other hand, was a little weird to me. In the first episode, I actually didn't like it at all. But now that I look back on it, I think I may have been attributing that semi-dislike with me recovering from the sheer insanity that I just witnessed from this very first episode. And so I just locked on to one aspect I could identify with being the English dub and just thought that that was the problem. But now, however, I will nod in agreement anytime I hear someone bring up the FLCL dub in regards to good dubs. Although, given the subject matter, I can see why a lot of people would prefer the sub in this case. Really though, if you wanted to try and figure out the enigma that is FLCL, the best thing you could do is watch it and try and figure it out on your own. Because the whole thing is open to interpretation. And not in the Lane or Hibane Renme sort of interpretation where you can just walk away from it with several different explanations that each on their own make some semblance of sense. Nah, anything you get out of FLCL will be a guess at best. And if you can do better, I would love to know how. But yeah, it's really an experience that you have to see to believe, and I would recommend that you do so, so... Wait, no, I'm doing this out of order, hold on. With the knowledge of this insanity in mind, I have calculated values for the categories of story, characters, animation, sound, and my own personal enjoyment, which, after running it over with a Vespa and hitting it on the head with a chainsaw guitar, leaves me giving FLCL with a numerical score of 7.70 out of 10, and an overall recommendation to buy it if you are able. I wouldn't go so far as to say that FLCL is a perfect example of the weirdness that can come out of Japan sometimes, but if you are fine with this, then you can handle most things, assuming at least you don't watch <clears throat> Hentai. And at the time of this video, for streaming options, you can check out FLCL on Hulu if you live in North America, as well as Funimation's website for free in sub, and also in dub if you happen to sign up for their premium services. Funimation also has FLCL available on both Blu-ray and DVD in North America if you prefer to go that route, with the show also having been licensed in France, Spain, Italy, and Germany if you know where to look alternate anime recommendations, I point you towards the two other insane anime that I know of, Excel Saga and Cromarty High School, both of which should easily fill your WTF quota for the year, assuming FLCL has not already done so. And with that, I leave you. Until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.